Of all the teams in Major League Baseball, the one with the biggest playoff drought is the Mariners. Ever since their record-setting 116-win season in 2001, it's been 20 seasons and no October drama. They've been good for a few of those years, winning 93 games in 2002 and 2003, and being over 500 five other times through 2018. But in 2021, they won 90 games for the first time since 2003, and they were battling for a playoff spot until the final weekend. Your assumption may be, this team is on the upswing. They must have had a really great year. But did they? Or did they just get lucky? Let's dive into the oddities of their 2021 season. Before we start, if you can drop a like on this video, I'd appreciate it. It helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. The 2021 Mariners won 90 games, but they were outscored on the season by 51 runs. Run differential isn't a perfect indicator, but in general, a winning record results in more runs scored than given up, and vice versa. Since 2000, and throwing out 2020 because of the short season, there have been 24 teams that have had a winning record, but with a negative run differential. Most of these teams have been around 500, between 82 and 86 wins, and they're underwater by less than 50 runs. Of these 24, the team that was the most underwater was the 2001 Mets, going 82 and 80, but giving up 71 more runs than they scored. You'll also notice, the Mariners are on here a lot, four times since 2007. The other team that has made this a habit over the last several years is the Yankees, doing it in 2013, 2014, and 2016. But the Mariners pulled it off in 2021, while winning 90 games, and that's only happened one other time since 2000, the 2007 Diamondbacks. They were the best team in the entire National League, and they won 90 games, despite being outscored by 20 runs. So the Mariners pulled off a pretty rare feat, but how did they do it? Let's dive into the stats and the splits. In 2020, the Mariners were outscored by 49 runs, a nearly identical mark to 2021, but they finished six games under 500. That's a 450 winning percentage, only good for 73 wins in a full season. Not surprisingly, this year's team had a Pythagorean win-loss record of 76 and 86, outscoring that mark by 14 games. The only other team that was over 500, but scored fewer runs than they gave up, was the Phillies, and they only outperformed their Pythagorean win-loss mark by two games. The next closest team in the luck column, taking the difference between their Pythagorean record and their actual record, was the Yankees with six. The 2021 Mariners didn't make a lot of sense, but like we saw earlier, they hardly ever make sense in their winning years. So what did they do right? First and foremost, they were 33-19 and 19 in one-run games. Nobody else won that many. That 635 win rate was only bested by two other teams, the 107-win Giants, who went 31-17, and 17, a 646 rate, and the 77-win Angels, going 25-14, and 14, a 641 rate. They found a way to win close games, so it's not surprising they were 14-7 and 7 in extra innings. The next best team was Boston at 11-5. Close games are one piece of the puzzle. The other side is the blowouts. In these games, the Mariners were awful. They won 11, but dropped 28. Even the lowly Diamondbacks were better in blowouts, winning every one out of three. Lucky for the Mariners, blowout losses still only count as one loss, even if those 28 losses wreaked havoc on the run differential. Here's another weird thing about the Mariners. They only won 68 games in 2019, but that team outscored their 90-win team in 2021, a 61 run difference. The pitching was obviously worse, giving up 145 more runs, but that 2019 team was right in line with their Pythagorean win-loss mark of 69-93. and If you want to find a comparable team, just look back to 2018. Outscored by 34, but finished with 89 wins. They were plus 12 in the luck column, only getting 77 wins on the Pythagorean win-loss scale, doubling up the next luckiest team. That team in 2018 also got blown out a lot, but not quite as bad. They were also great in one-run games, 36 wins against 21 losses. But when those 2018 Mariners got into extra innings, that's when they really shined, finishing with 14 wins and one loss. I don't believe it! My, oh my! In close games and in extra innings, you need a strong bullpen. We saw how successful they were in 2018 and 2021, and how bad they were in 2019. And I'll even bring 2020 into the mix. Let's take those years and compare the bullpen ERA. In 2018 and 2021, the ERA was under 4. In 2019, it was pushing 5. And in 2020, it was pushing 6. From a player level, 2018 was really easy to explain. Edwin Diaz had one of the great years in recent memory. His 57 saves led the league, blowing only 4, posting a 196 ERA, and striking out 15 batters per 9. That got him an all-star bid, 8th place in the Cy Young vote, and 18th in MVP. Before the 2019 season, Edwin Diaz was traded to the Mets. That left the Mariners looking for a worthy replacement. Ronis Elias emerged as a good arm, saving 14 out of 16, but he was traded to Washington at the deadline. It was the same story in 2020. Taylor Williams had nearly a 6 ERA, but he was 6 for 6 in saves, and he was traded to the Padres midseason. If you can believe it, they did the same exact thing in 2021. 
Kendall Graveman was looking great early on, 10 for 12 in saves with a .82 ERA, and he was traded to the Astros. Drew Steckenrider and Paul Sewold filled in, combining for 25 saves and posting ERAs of 2.0 and 3.06. When it came to offense, this team was nothing special. In fact, no American League team had a lower batting average, just 226. 14th in OPS was 688, and 11th in runs was 697. I know they play in a very pitcher-friendly park, but those 2001 Mariners led the league in runs with 927. I'm just saying. Offensively, when comparing this team to other Mariners teams since 2002, this one is right in the middle of the pack in runs, five teams ahead of them being under 500. Their overall pitching wasn't anything special either, right in the middle of the pack in runs allowed. Their team ERA of 430 was near the middle of the American League in 2021, despite playing in a pitcher's park, ranking 8th. If you want to find their most comparable season stat-wise, it's not the 2018 season, it's 2005. That team scored two more runs and gave up three more runs. Nearly identical, but the 2005 Mariners were 69-93, 21 games behind. The 05 Mariners undershot their Pythagorean record by seven games, above water by one game in blowouts, and even three games over 500 in one-run games. Their only real blemish was their 2-5 record in extra innings. Unlike the other years, these 2005 trends don't tell us much, so we have to dig a bit deeper. What was their record in games decided by 2 to 4 runs? That's where you're going to find your answer. 9 and 20 in 2 run games, 10 and 20 in 3 run games, and 3 and 10 in 4 run games. In the end, were the Mariners good or just lucky? I think there's a little bit of both here. Winning close games is a great skill, and for what it's worth, Baseball Reference has a clutch stat taking the win probability added for the offensive player and taking away situational wins. And the Mariners came in at 10.0, more than double the next best team. That was the Pirates at 3.9. Dylan Moore and JP Crawford both rank in the top 12 in the majors in this stat, and Kyle Seeger was the best in the American League, only behind Lamont Way Jr. for the overall lead. The bullpen also comes into play when talking about holding on to small leads, and we saw how good they were this year. That ERA of 388 being well below the major league bullpen average of 417, and fourth in the American League, but when it comes to their stats on both sides of the ball, comparing them to other Mariner teams over the last 20 years, they were middle of the road. They could have just as well been a 69-win team as a 90-win team. Based on 2021 alone, I don't think Mariner fans should get overly excited, but they did just get Robbie Ray, coming off winning the Cy Young, so that'll definitely help their chances going into next year. That's all I have for the Mariners. After doing my video on the teams that exceeded their expectations, I thought they should get a deep dive. In the end, this is what I found. If you have any thoughts, or any other insight to add, sound off in the comments below. Before you go, be sure to drop a like, and give me a sub for more content just like this. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.